I really like showing off when it comes to the kitchen. What better way to flex my skills than to make pasta from scratch? I'm not even gonna embarrass myself by trying to pronounce the name of this pasta. You see it, it's quick, it's easy. Then we're gonna pair this with an even easier sauce that looks pretty good. Then we'll eat good, call it a day. Let's put my skills to the test. Getting started on our pasta, we need to make the dough, which is gonna be super simple. I got you, I'm gonna make it look simple, I hope. So we're gonna start by sifting our flour. Usually I'm not a fan of sifting, but just cause it takes so much time, but we want the best pasta. And this is, by sifting it, it's gonna make it a lot easier to work with, smoother, no big chunks in it. So maybe this is a necessary step. The book I'm reading on pasta, they really do advocate for you to sift the flour. And this is double OO pasta flour. I will show you what that looks like. But if you don't have that, then you can go and get like regular flour, maybe even bread flour. But again, if it's bread flour, I would think that's more so for bread. So go ahead and knock all that out. Okay, and this is the pasta I am using. It is pasta double OO flour. I had to get this off of Amazon. So good luck finding it in the store. If you can find it in your store, please let me know because I am jealous of that. And then we'll go back over the top of that and we'll make a nice little hole for our pasta, or not our pasta, but our eggs to go into. That looks good. Make about an eight inch in diameter, but you want the walls high enough so when you pour the pasta in or the eggs, they don't make a mess everywhere. And as you can see, I do have some eggs right here. I'm going to beat them. You want to beat them before putting them in there too, just so it's a little easier to work in and incorporate all the flour into it. I love eggs. I wish I had some chickens because those egg yolks be crazy orange and just different colors. I think that's really cool. Okay, so we'll go ahead and pour all that into there. Oh, that is perfect, right? Okay, so let me get my tools I need. I need a bench scraper. We'll use the plastic one, that's my baby right there. Okay, and then now you just take that same fork that you have everything with, and you just slowly incorporate the eggs into it. You wanna be gentle with it, little by little. Get it all incorporated. You don't wanna break that dam, so I'll just do it slowly. Take your time on this step. This is my first time doing this, full transparency. I made pasta before, but it was some time ago. So, take your time. I'm gonna take my time, I gotta lock in. As I'm doing this, how do y'all how do y'all feel about the long form videos? I'm trying to figure out my niche, for real. I'm just playing with it, honestly, trying to see what sticks, but longer videos like that, more in depth, more raw too. Um, so, y'all let me know what y'all think about that. If the video y'all liked last week, the basil pizza, which was amazing. Yeah, y'all just let me know. Again, if you have something y'all want to see more of, by all means, I'm happy to do so. If you're like, man, I really like the short videos. I don't have that long of an attention span. Then one, you got to work on that attention span. But if y'all loved it, hey, I'm all for it because my videos usually, not gonna lie, it's like two hours worth of clips. And I always like have to compress it to under 15 minutes. But if y'all like that long form more raw, again, just let me know. I'm more than happy to keep it that way. Once we got that in, we have like a nice shaggy mess. So. We'll go ahead and take all that off of our dough hook, or not our dough hook, but our fork. And now you just wanna cut this in, all the flour into those eggs. So just go, go, and make sure you have a clean surface, for real. Oh. Goodness gracious. I'm making a mess. My kitchen been getting real messy lately. I'm really excited for this too. I didn't get any other pasta from the store, so if I can't make this, then y'all won't see the video. I'll have to do it again, but I'm very excited to see. So just keep on cutting it in, bring it together. It's gonna come together slowly. You just gotta be patient. So get it, put it down, keep on doing it. It's just like biscuits, so you wanna fold it, get all that extra flour, and put it right over the top. Again, we're just hydrating the dough. That's all it is. So as it gets more hydrated, it'll start sticking, coming together. So be patient at this step. Just work it. I'm gonna go and add all that. I said, I'm gonna get my hands dirty today. So get it, fold it, grab all that excess and knead it, knead it, knead it. And this process does take a little bit of time. I don't think you can make pasta like this. Like I guess the pasta dough in a stand mixer or a machine. We're not using a machine today at all. That is the real ultimate flex, you know? You know, what sounds better? I made this no machine or I made this using a machine. To me, that's easy, that's a no brainer. Okay, cool. Good, and then just continue to knead that. And then all that extra that you have right on the surface, continue to knead. So I'm turning it and pushing it away, turning it and pushing it away, turning it and pushing it away. 
turning and pushing it away and just keep on doing so. Now we got a good shaggy dough that's formed. We'll go ahead and put the rest of this right on top. I'm gonna cover this with plastic wrap and just let this rest for about five to 10 minutes and then we'll come back and we'll need it one more time. But just so I can let that gluten form and get the dough all hydrated. And then after 15 minutes, I'm gonna continue to knead. My hands are slightly wet too, just to add a little bit more hydration into that dough and just continue to knead it. Three to five minutes. I always try to keep up with the time in my head. And usually when I'm cooking, I always have music playing. So that makes me know like one song, three minutes, two songs, six minutes, so on and so forth. So it's hard trying to do this in my head. I keep looking back, trying to figure out what time it is, how long I've been doing this for. But continue to knead it. Okay, and see, now we have a nice ball of dough. Press into it, the addition comes back. That's how you know. And it's done, I'll do it one more time, close up. Bang. And it'll slowly start to spring back. That's how you know your pasta's done, or ready to be rested for a little bit. So take it, and now we'll just cover this with plastic wrap. Very tightly. Okay, and now we'll let this ball sit for 30 minutes, and then we'll come back and knock the rest of it out. Our first rest has been completed. I think it was like 15, 20 minutes I waited. Not too long. That we're at that just to make sure we can extra good coverage. And as we can see, the dough still looks amazing, beautiful. We're gonna cut this dough in half because we're not gonna need all of it. So, and as you can see, oh, I guess y'all can't see that, but it's still springing back. So you know, pasta's done, we'll go over. It's just a lightly flour surface, not too much. And then we'll split this dough in half. We'll just eyeball it. I'm not trying to be perfect with this. And bang, you got some nice gluten forming in this. I need to cut it all the way through. All right, put that to the side again on a lightly flatter surface. I'm gonna take it and knead it. So just turn it and knead it. Turn and knead, turn and knead. And once you have a ball like so, you just rinse and repeat with the other one and then let this rest again another 15, 20 minutes and then we'll be good to go and we can roll this out and we can really start having some fun with the pasta. All right, so after rolling out our dough, or not rolling out our dough, but after resting our dough for about 30 minutes, the gluten is formed, the dough ball is looking beautiful, nice and bright, vibrant yellow. We'll begin to roll this out. So I need a little bit of flour down on your surface just so it doesn't stick. I think in the, in the book it was like throw it on the counter and it'll disperse evenly, but I, that did not work. Okay. So I can do that and then I'll put a little bit over the top. And then we need a roller pin. I got this roller pin off of Amazon yesterday. Now I feel like I'm a true Italian, be able to make some real authentic pasta. And usually when it comes to, I was supposed to flower my, my rolling pin. I forgot what the name of this. The name of this pasta is called Pelgetti. I don't know. It starts with a T. That's what we're going for. So just, you want to roll this out. You want to roll it out to about four post-it notes thick, right? Where you can like barely start to see through it. That's what the book told me. So that's what we're going for. And you just want to take your time on the step, get it, move it. It's okay to use a little bit of flour. So I'm just going to continue to roll it out. You know, if you had a machine, this would be very easy, but we're not going for you easy. We're trying to flex today. And usually when it comes to like making recipes from scratch, um, I usually like to start off with the hardest recipe because if I can master the hardest recipe the first time I do something, then I know everything else below that is gonna be a lot easier to do. So it's kind of like backward psychology in a sense, but that's how I like to operate. Just make my life a lot easier. And then another reason I love cooking from scratch too it just, I feel like the food just tastes better too. You know, being able to say I made everything from scratch. You're like, it's like quality control at its finest. So I love, love, love cooking from scratch. I always have respect for the people that cook from scratch because that takes time and love and energy. And everybody always asks me why my food tastes so good. It's because I make it from scratch. I put my foot in it. Not literally, but figuratively, you know. I make it with so much love and care. I always act like I'm cooking for my mom, truly. That comes from it. Okay, and then just keep on flipping it. Hopefully I'm not using too much flour, but there's only one way to find out. Again, this is my very first time making this, so we'll see. This is gonna take a long little bit, I can tell already. Okay, so now, after a very long time, take a sticky note, and this is how I'm testing it. 
and that is the perfect, perfect thickness. So now to make this, the book says we gotta let this rest just seven to 10 minutes just so it slowly starts to dry out. You'll know when it starts to dry out when the edges slowly kind of start to crackle just a little bit. So we're gonna let that sit out for seven to 10 minutes and then we're gonna come back and we'll shake this. Now we let that rest for just a little bit. I'll scoot this over so y'all can see, get a better view of that. You just wanna take the edges and now you just wanna fold them over. Just like so. Take it and fold it. I like to just do one side at a time. Fold it. I probably could have squared this off too a little bit when I started, but yellow. And then just keep on going. Shape, shape, shape. Okay, maybe that's the one. It's a little too big, but that's okay. We can fix that. I make the mistake so it can be easy on y'all's end. Okay, shape. Go a little bit more. We'll shape it just that, like that. Okay, bang. I'm happy with that. Okay. And so, as we can see, the edges don't completely all touch. So, I'm gonna trim the first little bit, trim that off. Don't need this. Then we'll trim that off. Don't need that. And now you can just cut to whatever width thickness that you like. I'm probably gonna do like finger length. So, just like so. Just go all the way through. I wish I had like the wooden cutting board surface as a counter instead of cutting it on my actual granite, but we'll be okay. Ah, uh, don't do that. I was trying to get a perfect little pasta pull at the end. Oh well. Okay, and just go all the way across. Uh oh. I might have just pulled this off. I'm happy with it. It's looking good. This is kind of junk. Uh, we can get one more out of there. No pasta goes to waste besides that one. So we don't need that one. Bang. And now I got to do it. Hold on one second. I've seen the people on TikTok do this, so I got to be able to do it. You take your thing. You take, you take your some tweezers right down the middle of it. I probably can't lift it all up. But now you have some nice, quick, and easy pasta. That was actually really good. I'm happy with that. Okay. So now to shape this, it's very simple. You're gonna take it, you just slide it off onto your hands. However many you want in one strand, we'll go, we'll go a good little bit. Go a good little bit. And you take it and you wrap it. One going that way, the one going the other way. Let it shake off. And you have your pasta ready to go. I'm all over the place right now. So I have a baking sheet right next to me with some parchment paper that I'm just gonna place the pasta on. To just nice little balls, just so they can sit while we start on the sauce, just like so. And as we can see, we got two bunches of pasta. Again, you have to hold another piece of dough. If you wanna roll that out, I don't need that, but we'll set this to the side. We'll bring back our, probably a hot pan, make our sauce, and then we'll boil these and we'll get it going. Okay, our sauce begins with a little bit of butter going down in the pan. That pan is way too hot. So we gotta turn the heat down just a little bit. This is the worst part when you forget to wash your pan, always watch it because then this is what happens, your butter gets way too hot and it'll start to burn before it gets any good. That brown butter smells amazing though. So we'll let this melt. And that brown butter sauce we see right here, this is what we want. We really want that because that is gonna make a good sauce. So I don't want it to burn too quickly. So maybe I need to turn it down even more. So as you can see, ooh, that's hot. We'll go in there and just add our prosciutto pieces in there. This piece is a little bigger than bite size. I know that one wasn't, but we're just gonna add that in there. And we're gonna let this get nice and crispy. And I have some water heating up next to me with a little bit of salt in it, not even a little bit, a good couple handsful, just so we can cook the pasta. And that's gonna cook maybe 30 seconds to a minute. It's gonna start to float. But with fresh pasta, it takes like 10% of the time it does for box pasta. So. Just place these in there. This is smelling great already. And the dish of this in the book is called prosciutto with butter. Simple, simple, simple. Next week, the pasta recipe will be a little bit harder, a little bit more challenging, but just take it day by day, weekend by weekend, get better. Oh yeah, this smells so good, jeez. Need my little chef tongs, we'll flip it over. The last time I had prosciutto, I think was when I was eating a charcuterie board. I think my job had it 
I don't know where I had the security board now that I'm thinking of it. But security boards is low key kind of good. I was a hater at first, but the cheese and the meat, that's an OG combination. Okay, once it's nice and crispy, got a little bit of color on it, I'm gonna take these out the pan. I'm gonna make my life a lot easier, right? Okay. Okay. I don't know why I was making my life so hard, so we'll go ahead and take all the prosciutto out. And I'm gonna make just a little bit more prosciutto too, just so we can have some more. Can never have too much prosciutto, right? But if you weren't gonna use any more prosciutto, all you would do is you just turn the heat off and wait for that pasta to get done, and then you're gonna toss it into this. And it's the most simplest sauce ever. And I'm sure some pancetta would be really good with this. I love pancetta. I wanna make some carbonara. I might do that one weekend. I've never made true authentic style. And what's crazy with that is that you see so many recipes and I never know if it's authentic or not. I try to meet some Italian people just so I can ask them, but I don't know any Italian people. If you're Italian, please comment down below a recipe that I should try. And just coat that butter all the way around. Okay, so now we're just waiting for our pasta water to come into a boil. We're gonna boil our pasta, finish cooking this, set this to the side, we'll turn the heat off of it, set it to the side, and then once everything is done, we'll turn the heat back on, cook it, emulsify it, and we're eating good. Dang, so now our pasta is done. Our pan is heating up over medium heat. This is gonna, this is gonna make a mess, I already feel. That's good. We'll add all of our noodles to it. Oh yeah, smells great already. Okay, and then you just wanna toss this to coat it. Oh yeah, flip it up. Good. Then we need just a splash of some of that pasta water just to emulsify the sauce. Get it nicely well coated. Start to form a good sauce on the bottom. The color is changing, the flavor is also good. We're gonna add our prosciutto back in. That looks good right there to me. Go ahead, toss this just to combine. And then the very last thing we need it's just a little bit of Parmigiano Reggiano. Probably about a fourth cup. That's looking good to me. I know I like my pasta cheesy. I like anything with cheese. Continue just to work that in till it's nicely melted. Oh yeah, this is good. I need just a little bit more pasta water to emulsify everything. And then just toss it to aerate it. This is gonna emulsify the sauce very well. Oops, don't make a mess like I am. Bang, good. We have a nice and easy pasta. Took no time to make. We'll turn our heat off, we'll plate it up, and we'll call it a day. You should take all your pasta, and you wanna plate up. Try not to make a mess. It's so hard plating pasta and making it look pretty. If you know a trick or hack, please let me know. That looks good to me. I lost a piece. I peeped that. To make it look pretty, I'm gonna try turning it and see where we can get. We didn't get too far at all, but that's okay. And then we'll go in there with just a little bit more of that prosciutto we set aside. And then to top it off, I don't know if this is traditional, we'll go over there with just a little bit of cracked black pepper. And then we'll do a nice small sprinkle of Parmesan cheese. Not Parmesan, Reggiano. Parmigiano Reggiano cheese, that's what it is. Okay, that's looking good to me. Beautiful, magnificent, I'm happy with that. Oh, I'm ready to take a bite of this. Money shot. Say it with me today, looking, <laughs> and I'm joking. Okay, let's go for this bite. Need me a little bit. A little big bite? I'll go a big bite. Okay, good. I probably should have cut them just a little bit thinner, to be honest. Mmm. Mmm. I'm, I'm very happy with that. My first time making pasta on camera, super nerve wracking, but I low key cooked the pasta for a little bit too long. I cooked it for about like a minute and 10 seconds. Probably should have stayed closer to that 35, maybe even 45 second range max. But other than that, it's all good. The prosciutto, the butter sauce, that is really good. The Parmesan Reggiano, amazing and simple. But like always guys, if you liked the video, comment down below, hit that subscribe button, y'all know the deal. Let me know what I can do next, which I wanna see next. And as we progress, obviously, each week after this is gonna be a little bit harder. So next week's recipe won't be as simple as this. The pasta dough is making is very similar, but the recipe will be a little bit more advanced. Um, and then I'll just carry that on through the month. Eat great food. Hit the gym after you eat some great food. Uh, I'll see y'all next week. Peace.